Hello everyone and welcome again to another Teacher Joseph podcast. Well, we're going to go through some news headlines today uh, and I hope you find these helpful. Well, the first one is about Wales. Yeah, there was an earthquake there last night. An earthquake in Wales. How bizarre! But yes, we do get earthquakes from time to time in the UK. They're never strong earthquakes. We don't have um, the plates under the ground which create earthquakes for us. I believe the scientific term is plates. These are the things which cause earthquakes. They move in the middle of the earth and they're under some countries. We don't have any of those, but we do sometimes have minor earthquakes where the buildings shake. And last time uh, this happened, I think, that I can remember was quite some years ago, but there was no damage done. Uh, and in Wales last night, everything is fine. But it still makes headline news today. One of the few times that Wales might actually be in the news. <laughs> Uh, right, what else? Well, I can tell you that uh, our government is trying to agree uh, a deal with the Northern Ireland government. Let me just explain a little bit about that because it's very confusing. And I've also done a separate podcast about it, which will be coming up in the next few days. But basically, the UK is made up of four very, very different countries. And because of Brexit, there was a feeling that Northern Ireland was being left out of the UK because a border check had to take place for food coming in from Europe. It couldn't take place at the Irish border with Northern Ireland because an agreement had already been made that there would never ever be a border there. So that border, for the purposes of checking food, moved to the North Sea. I mean, just politically, there was really nothing there, of course. Uh, but by doing that, Boris Johnson created a big problem because he had effectively left Northern Ireland in Europe. Um. So that's been a big issue ever since, and it's a headache for the European Union, for Britain, and for Northern Ireland. They had major disagreements about it, and their own parliament uh, isn't in operation because of this. The unionists who are involved with that parliament, refused categorically to work with the other politicians until the central government sorted this issue. And that's been ongoing for a while. Northern Ireland has a very, very different history. Um, you know, some people come to the UK and they think that London is uh, some kind of... How can I say it? It's it's some kind of mirror as to what the UK is like, but actually it's not. London is a very rich, affluent city, but the further north you go, you see that we live very differently. And by the time you get to Northern Ireland and Scotland, you see that well, there isn't so much money going around in the governments in the north. And some of our areas are very, very poor and need extra additional support to help people with drug addiction and alcohol addiction. This is a darker side of the UK that you don't get to hear about. So um, Northern Ireland has its own issues and its own history, which <laughs> I'll do a separate podcast about. Uh, but basically, uh, the central government say they're very close to finding a deal with them uh, which will restore their parliament again. I really hope that happens because they're in a bit of a mess, I think. Uh, what other news headlines do we have today? Well, uh, 
there's a music group here called the Pet Shop Boys. I'm not sure if they're still making music. They were very big in the 80s and 90s. You probably remember their song, West End Girls. It was very famous. Well, um, somebody bought a copy of West End Girls at a record auction recently. It was an original from 1984, and they found a little letter inside it signed by one of the band members. I'm not really sure I know why that's headline news, but, well, somebody obviously wants to hear that. Um, oh, here's one. Netflix cuts its prices in 30 countries. Oh, interesting. I don't know about you, but every time I go to Netflix... There's nothing there that I really want to see. I think part of the problem is there's too many things to see. Um, so, you know, if there was just a few choices, I might be able to pick something. But, I mean, when you have access to uh, movies from around the world, thousands upon thousands, it's, it, it just makes choices much more difficult, doesn't it? And on top of that... Uh, you can watch any TV channel from almost anywhere in the world, live streaming on the internet. Um, oh, which reminds me, oh, the Ayatollah in Iran, he has his poetry nights on Saturday evenings. That might be worth looking at, although uh, I'm not sure it will be in English. In fact, I'm sure it won't be in English, but still might be nice, poetry. Um... Here's another one. Disabled actors patronized by TV industry. Actors with disabilities are often cast to make non-disabled people look inclusive, an artist says. Eurovision is getting 10 million from the UK government. Oh, great. Yeah, that's the government that can't afford to give nurses pay rises, but it is giving 10 million to a really trashy song contest uh oh edinburgh king's theater has been saved from closure that's another one. Oh, this is an interesting one steve allen the presenter from lbc i don't know if you know lbc but it's basically a, a radio channel in london it's very good i always recommend it because it's one of our speech stations so steve allen has been there for 44 years. I'm sure you might have heard him. He's He does the overnight show, although in your country you might hear it at a different time. Uh, well, he's left. He couldn't uh, agree his contract terms. His contract, I think, was up last week, and he just simply tweeted that he's not coming back. And there we are. He says it's been an honor and privilege that's a real shame. He he was a really nice TV and radio presenter, but uh, I think his style of presenting had kind of uh, moved on a little bit. Let me explain. So he his his style of presenting was very controversial. He would laugh at people because of their weight, because of perhaps personal characteristics and these things. He got into trouble, I think, a few years ago for saying that Gordon Ramsay's daughter was a chubby little thing, and he had to apologize for that. So he hadn't really moved on, you know. That, that, that kind of TV and radio program was fine 20 years ago, but it's not okay now. You can't say anything anymore. So I'm not sure if that's why he he couldn't renew his contract, but for whatever reason, uh, he's gone. I mean, he was 70 years old, I think, or 68, something like this. I'm sure he'll probably turn up in another radio station because uh, uh, he's so full of life, but uh, he brought a lot of joy to London people and people around the country. Um I've been listening to him since I was 13. So, 
Yeah, very, very nice person. Although I think he got a bit lost towards the end. You can't just insult people. Well, you can, but <laughs> you get into trouble for it. Uh, let's see. Oh, the BAFTAs. Oh, interesting. Let's see. The BAFTAs red carpets. Hollywood stars gathered for the BAFTA Film Awards on Sunday, which were held at London's Royal Festival Hall. Yeah, I heard Tom Cruise was here. I don't know what he was doing here, if it was the BAFTAs or not, but uh, he was saying that he watches his own movies. Oh, no, no, I don't <laughs> I don't like the idea of that. I can't even listen to my own voice. Uh, Hollywood stars gathered for the BAFTA Film Awards on Sunday, which were held at London's Royal Festival Hall. Oh, let's have a look at the pictures. Who's this? Actress Lily James. Never heard of her. Oh, she could have dressed better. She's... Ooh, oh, no, no. I don't think I can even describe that picture because it's... Uh, Really not appropriate. So moving on, Viola Davis, star of The Woman King. Well, she's better dressed than the last one. Uh, she looks harmless enough. Um, Kat Blanchett and Austin Butler. Oh, well, at least they've made the effort to dress properly. Um, Michelle Yeoe, never heard of her. Oh, is that that Korean woman, is it? Maybe Eddie Redmayne, who stars in The Good Nurse. Well, he looks about 10 years old. No, I don't think he's Botox, but there's definitely uh, something on his skin to make him look younger, I would say. Yeah, he looks, he's one of these people that looks about uh, 15 or 20, but in reality, he's probably 50. Uh, the teeny tiny puppets from Guillermo del Toro's Pinocchio which won Best Animated Feature. Oh, please. Uh, the Banshees of Inishirin. Oh, yeah, someone else told me about that recently. I think I was uh, in a class and someone mentioned that. Well, again, at least they're properly dressed. Who's this with the bodice? Um, Ariana de Bose returned to perform and present one of the awards this year. She's wearing a kind of like see-through pearl dress thing and she's wearing a bodice under it. Oh, no, no. Uh, next, Paul Mesco. That's the guy from After Sun. Really, I, I haven't heard of any of these people, <clears throat> so hopefully you know them. Um, Danielle Deadweiler. Oh, she doesn't look happy, does she? Who's the man that looks like Larry King live? Oh, Bill Nighy, or Nighy, who stars in Living. Don't know who that is. Oh, here's Jamie Lee Curtis. I know her. She was in the Halloween movies, wasn't she? Jamie Lee Curtis, Everything, Everywhere, All at One Star. Jamie Lee Curtis was up for Best Supporting Actress. I'm surprised she can walk in that dress. Honestly, it looks... Uh, Looks a bit tight. Um, and she's modeling for the cameras there. Uh, who's this that's dressed in orange? Florence Pugh. The Wonder is her movie. Uh, it was nominated for Outstanding British Film. Oh, the face, honestly. I don't know why these people can't just smile. Uh, Naomi Aki. Nominated for the Rising Star Award, she portrayed Whitney Houston. She portrayed Whitney Houston. She looks more like the mother from the Cosby Show. Um, who else do we have? Uh, Rami Malek, uh, a former BAFTA winner. Yeah, at least the men are kind of dressed properly. Uh, who's this with the long black dress? Game of Thrones actress Gwendolyn Christie. Never heard of her. Well, I hope these names mean something to you. The only one I knew was Jamie Lee Curtis. Richard E. Grant. I wonder if that was the man from Four Weddings and a Funeral. Uh, I don't think it is. It doesn't look like him anyway. Um, 
costume designer Sandy Powell, oh please, she looks like a cake wearing that thing. Uh, oh, here's the Prince and Princess of Wales. Prince William has been president of BAFTA since 2010. Kate is wearing some kind of black and white outfit there. Uh, William in a tuxedo. Um, yeah, oh no, no. <laughs> Not amused, I'm afraid. Yeah. Uh, so that's the BAFTAs from last night. Uh, let's see what else is in the news today. Um, yeah, this thing about Eurovision getting 10 million from the government. It seems really strange when the government's saying they can't afford to pay nurses and teachers, isn't it? Uh that's all. Oh, plans for a huge film studio in the northeast of England have been unveiled. Let's have a look at that. Plans for a new UK film studio. I didn't even know we made movies here. Well, I guess we did make Harry Potter, didn't we? We have a, a famous uh, film studio at Pinewoods, which is in West London, near Slough. And... We used to have another one over at Shepperton, Shepperton Studios. Uh, and there were many that closed down. We had one called Ealing Studios as well. There was also one around called Nettlefold. That was in Walton-on-Thames, but I think that's been gone since the 80s. Plans for a new UK film studio complex have been unveiled Uh it's to be one of the largest in Europe. Yeah, and yet there's supposedly no work for anybody and our economy is supposed to be really bad. I don't understand these contradictions. Crown Works Studios has been proposed as a new production hub on the banks of the River Wear in Sunderland. Oh, that's a really dire area. Um, I hope that they manage to tidy it up a bit. A lot of our old towns and villages really look awful and it would be nice if uh, they tidied them up a bit. Uh, James Corden is supposedly, uh, he said that uh, he loves the idea. Uh, but our opposition government said... Uh, that they have mixed feelings about it, although it is a landmark moment for the city. Yeah, oh, very interesting. Yeah, well, that's it for me. Uh, you wanted a longer podcast, so you got one with the news headlines there. I hope you've enjoyed this. Uh, let's talk again soon. See you all. Bye.